This is just a brief Maya tutorial um, about using n particles to simulate uh, a population of cells crawling along a surface. Uh, well, we don't see them crawling exactly. However, uh, we can have them move in a direction that we want uh, as a crowd um, just by writing a few expressions on a specially prepared piece of geometry. So we're aiming for something like this. We have cells starting at one end, moving along this piece of geometry, and then disappearing when they get to the other end. Now this is a pretty simple setup, uh, but it just takes a little bit of preparation to get things working right. Now, uh, this would only work for a sort of far away view when we're pulled back from the from the view, and we just want to imply the movement of a large population of things, not to examine the individual mo movement of any one of them. So I have a NURB surface here, and this was created using uh, the by rail tool. So let me just do that again. Just go into my top view here. And if I just create a couple of CV curves, I'll make something similar to what I had before. I'm trying to space it out kind of evenly. I'm going to duplicate this and move it. I'm working away from the world origin, so that's why my manipulator is up here. And then just go into CV mode, soft selection, and I can just tweak this a little bit. <clears throat> and anyway, get a shape something like this. Go back into object mode, and then we're going to create a couple Oops, a couple of other curves. This time we'll just use the EP curve tool. So it just takes two clicks to make a single curve. But I'm going to snap it, the first point, to this curve. So holding down C and left mouse clicking on each of those curves. So the ends are exactly on the ends of these two longer curves. Hit Y to do the same thing again. Hold down C, left mouse click left mouse click and drag just change these shapes a little bit we want to be careful not to move the end vertices pardon me control vertices so they stay in the same spot as the end of the longer curves so something like that and to make this into a surface we will use the by rail 2 tool, which means we have to select the two profile curves and then the two rail curves. And then we'll get a shape like this. Now the reason for doing it this way is that when creating a NURBS patch like this, we know that the U and the V direction are set. It's a rectangular patch that's deformed into this shape. So I know in this example that the U direction goes along the length of this object and the Y direction, sorry, the V direction is always going along the the narrow way here. So if we can see this, if we select the surface, go to display NURBS and turn on surface origins, we can see this red line here indicates the U direction, this green line here indicates the V direction, and if we were to look at this in the um, perspective view, you can see there's another line here pointing up, and that's the Z direction or the normal direction of the surface. So because of that, we know that in terms of U and V coordinates, the length of this surface is 0 to 1 in U in this direction, and the length of the surface in V is uh, 0 to 1 this way. So we can use this information to have particles be emitted from this surface, but lock their emission address to 0 in U, which would be along this edge here, and have them gradually move along in the U direction and have some variation in V so they kind of jitter back and forth. Okay, so let's try that. I'm just going to turn off my surface origins here and we'll select this surface and we will go to end particles, create end particles and we'll create an emitter In this case, we want to create, oops, not create an emitter, sorry. We want to go to end particles, emit from object. 
And here we still have to change it to a surface emitter. And we want to make sure this option is turned on. By default, it's turned off. It's need parent UV NURBS. This also works for Polygon with um, its UVs laid out properly. So it doesn't have to be a NURBS patch. So in this case, we wanted to have a speed of zero. We don't want to use the particle's momentum to move them along this. We want to kind of drag them along the surface based on their U and V address. So we just want to turn off all sort of speed attributes here. And right now we'll have a, a low rate, two particles per second, just so we can see what's happening. So that we can call this crawl particle emitter. And we'll create that. And let's just see what happens. So I'm using the play every frame. So if I play the animation now, you can see that particles are being created, but they're just falling away. So Okay, so you can see that the particles are falling away. That's because they're still listening to gravity here. So in the attribute editor for the particles, we can go in and just tell them to ignore solver gravity here. And so now if we play the animation back, let me just turn off my grid. We can see the particles are being born on the surface different locations. We still have collisions turned on, so you can see if they're born close to each other, they will bump into each other and shove each other out of the way. However, the particles aren't locked to the surface in any way. They're just born there, but there's nothing uh, making them move, so there's no reason for them to move. But we want to make sure that we um, have them stay to, on the surface in case the surface moves or if we need to deform the surface and so the particles aren't left behind. So to do that we have to select the particles and they already are and shift select the surface and make that surface a goal for the particles something they want to move to. So if we go to end particles goal just open the options and make sure the goal weight is set to 1 by default it would be 0.5. We'll click, click create now if we play the animation, you can see that their behavior is different. They're just sticking to the CVs on this surface. That's why they're so orderly. So that's not what we want either. So there's one more step. We've got to write a per particle array attribute. So again, let's look in the attribute editor here. And scroll down here until we get to the per particle array attributes, and you can see that two of the attributes here are parent v and parent u. So what that means is that when these particles were born, uh, their location in u and v was recorded. Their parent is this piece of geometry where they were born, and so they are recording where on that geometry they were born. However, because we set a goal, they immediately jump to the vertices and they leave their birthplace, but we want them to stay there. So to do that, we can go to Add Dynamic Attributes, click General, and you'll see this when it opens up. If you go to the Particle tab, we can also add these two options, Goal U and Goal V. Here they are here. And now if, we, if they don't appear, uh, which sometimes they don't, if you just deselect the particles and reselect them, then they should appear in here. So we're going to write a simple creation expression. So right click beside goal V or goal U. And we'll just type this simple expression, which is goal U equals zero. And goal V equals parent V. So I'm going to change this first just to show what happens when I type parent u for both of them. So edit that. Now if I play the animation, let me just move this out of the way. So now we go back to the initial pattern that we saw where they're just randomly appearing on the surface rather than jumping to the vertices in spite of that goal weight. You can see some of them are jittering because they're close to each other and they're colliding. So what this expression does is say the goal that you should be um, seeking to achieve 
should be where you're born, your parent in U and V. But in this case, we want them to be born at the beginning of the surface over here at, at U value of zero. So that's why originally I typed goal U equals zero. Okay, so now if we play this back, let's see what happens. So now they're all being born here, but at different parts in Y. Now they're all bumping into each other because of uh, self-collision. We don't really have to worry about that because as soon as they're born, they're going to leave home and start walking along this path. So how do we do that? Well, let's just copy this expression. <coughs> Excuse me. And then rather than in the creation expression as we see here, click in runtime before or after dynamics. It doesn't really matter in this case. We'll paste that expression. Oops, I guess I didn't copy it. Let's just type it again. So goal u equals goal u let's say plus a random value between 0 0.1 no that's too much that would be 10% along the length so 0 0.01 comma 0 0.03 just so there's a little bit of jitter okay and we'll say goal v equals goal v plus rand in this case we'll say negative 0 0.02 comma 0 0.02 so they'll move around on each frame so this is what uh, oops not jail but goal so what this means is because it's a runtime expression this will be evaluated on each frame so on after frame one, goal u will still be itself, but it will add a small value that ranges between 0 0.01 and 0 0.03. And goal v will also be the same plus a small value. And that will be added each frame. And with goal v, I did a negative amount to a positive amount just so it moves back and forth in v to add some jitter. We can always change this after, but let's just see what it looks like. So we edit. And I'm also always looking down here on my screen to see if it turns red, which usually means I made a syntax error. So let's play the animation. Okay, so that's working. We're running into one little problem here that uh, I think this is being pushed so much in V that this one is getting stuck on the edge. So let's just take this part of the expression out for now and see if that solves the problem. So when you're troubleshooting, you just want to make one change and see if that resolves the issue, rather than making a bunch of changes because then it's difficult to locate where the error was. Yeah, so they seem to be sliding freely along here. I think that one might have resolved itself after a little while. Uh, but it might have been pushed so far in terms of value of goal v if it was went to negative 5 or something it would take a long time for that value to come back this way so that can happen by chance but if we put that value back in here or something similar rand 0 oops negative 0 0.01 0 0.01 Let's try that again, just to see if we get another problem. So it could happen again, it's not happening yet. But now you can see that they're all piling up on the end here. So what we need to happen is for these to disappear at the end. And the best way to make them di disappear is to kill them, rather than to do something like making them transparent, because they still exist and they still have to be calculated. But if they're dead, then Maya doesn't have to worry about them anymore. So we can write another little expression in runtime just to evaluate what's going on here so Maya can know how to deal with them. Now the first thing we have to do is select these particles, look at the attribute editor and see how their lifespan is being handled. So if we just go up here a little bit at the top they're set to live forever, so the lifespan mode is live forever. We want to use lifespan pp to control them. 
We don't have any value in lifespan PP yet, though, so let's do that. Let's just go down here a little bit. Here's lifespan PP. Now, it doesn't really matter where we right-click. It will go into the same expression editor if I right-click. Even if I want to write an expression for lifespan PP, I can still go up to goal U, right-click, and say to go to runtime before dynamics. We see the goal U, goal V expression that we wrote. We can just click down here and write one for lifespan PP. But we're going to write an if statement. And our if statement is if goal u is greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 0 0.999 so if it gets to the end of u then we want to write let's see lifespan pp equals 0 else lifespan pp equals something like 20 seconds so it's far longer than our animation actually it's not really but they get to the end before that value but so you could be a, a large value it doesn't matter 100 seconds they'll die long before they get there so let's just hit edit i don't know if i the syntax is right here yep that looks good i'm just going to put in a couple of tabs here just so we can see the if and else statement and now let's play the animation. So they're born, they move along, and now when they get to the end, they die. They disappear. Maya kills them. So now that we have that done, our little test was just using a few particles, we can add some more and see if that introduces any complexity in the situation. So go back to the emitter. Instead of two particles per second, let's say we do something like 30 particles per second. Just close this attribute editor. And now we'll play the animation. So it's working, but you can see some of them are flying off. And that's because they're bumping into each other and they're forcing them off the surface. So there are a couple ways we can solve that. One thing is we can simply turn off self-collision. In this case, that might be the best solution. You can turn off self-collide here. Or we can do things, if we want some collisions, we can, well, first of all, make these particles smaller. So instead of radius of 0.2, we can do a radius of 0.1, so they're half the size. And their <clears throat> collide width scale, scale is a multiplier, so it's 1, so they match the size of the particle here. Uh, but the self-collide width scale is also one. So we can actually make the self-collide a little smaller. So they can bump into each other a little bit and intersect before they actually shove each other aside. So we can try that and see what happens. So that's better. Now, it might not be worth it to do this simply because you might get some stray that gets pushed off the edge even with these lowered settings. So you can look at that and see what it looks like, and then try it with self-collide. Maybe it'll look just the same, and we'll avoid any problems. So that really kind of looks the same to me. So in this case, I would probably just turn off self-collide. Now in terms of rendering these things, of course, you wouldn't render at this surface, so you could just make it not renderable. And you can render out these particles however you wish. These ones are using points. These ones are using uh, blobby surfaces. So you can change them to accommodate whatever your need is and then comp uh, composite them in After Effects or whatever program you're using. So this is a nice predictable way to control a crowd of particles to make it seem as if they're uh, following a path that you've set in, in whatever situation you have. So I hope you find it helpful. Thanks.